final keynote speech before we have lunch. So please welcome to the stage Sarah Casanova, Head of Satcom Services Solutions at Airbus. Her talk is UHF TaxSat, uh, complementing strategic operations in the modern connected battle space. Thank you. And I will keep that quick because I'm sure everybody wants to go for lunch. I'll just put it because I'm not that tall as the previous um, speaker. So anyway, so let's get started. Um, what I will take you through today is a bit different to loads of things that you would have been listening to in the previous speech. So I'm not going to talk about high throughputs thing, not going to talk about new technologies. So I'm going to go all vintage. And we're going to go and cover UHF TaxSat as a secured combat proven solution, which um, at the heart of today's event is actually more and more valuable. And although it dates for the 1960s, it is nowadays at the heart of most of our operations. So I'm not going to go on because I know we are limited in time into all the how space is so important for the modern warfare. Everybody's aware of that. But I think a very important stuff that I want to mention, because we've not necessarily covered it that much today, is that we rely on space communication for the conduct of our operation every day. It's the backbone to support the flow of data and to foster information superiority. However, when we speak about that, we need to tie it quite quickly uh, and quite tightly as well with the level of um, warfare that we're discussing. So. If we, if we actually take this angle, rather than going directly to the how we do things, if we look at the what, uh, we can understand that between the various levels of operation, be it strategic, operational, or tactical, what type of information that needs to be flown and the amount of data that also needs to be flown differs, which makes it actually important to understand that at the strategic level, when you define your objectives and when you decide what you're going to do, secrecy and the way you transfer your information is, is really important. So you rely on systems like Skynet or Syracuse or all the military hardened systems. At the operational level, you sit at the crossroads. You, you know, transfer certain sensitive data, but you also flow back some data from the field. And at the tactical level, what is really critical is timing. So time is of the essence. And that's why technologies like UHF are very, very important because at the tactical level, when you're engaging, when you're in battles, um, your communication has to flow quickly, easily, and sometimes while being engaged. So when we are talking about that level, the time that we are using is not, you know, years or months, such as the strategic level or weeks or days, like the operational. At this level, what we're talking about is hours and sometimes minutes. Um, so SATCOM is a must-have for that flow of information and, and technologies such as narrowband SATCOM and UHF are critical for that. So this is just a very nice picture done by our communications so that you guys can understand that flow of information. But basically, um, in a, in a theater, you, you transfer the information from the command center to all the various operational centers. Then you have some flows of information within the theaters and also then in between theaters, or then you need to reach back information to your um, central area of command. Um, so summarize this very theoretical approach um, between the various levels of warfare, the data um, differ in terms of the amount generated and transferred, in terms of their criticity and sensitivity, and in terms of temporality as well. Um, the amount of data as well generated on the tactical level has changed and they, because of the sensors equipping the soldiers, um, the drones, all the, the data that we collect, we can now say that there is this tactical stream I was talking to you about, so like very kind of um, sensitive on, on, on timing for that matter. Uh, but there is also another one, uh, which is a, a more kind of strategic stream when you need to, to send back loads of data. So I'm not going to cover this one. Uh, we'll, we'll remain with the tactical and, and see why it is important that for the years to come, uh, we keep on investing, like Airbus recently did, um, into technologies to provide those short bursts of data really quick to set up, really quick to operate in order to, to uh, maintain um, our presence in that, in, that, in, that, in that area. So going down to the road of UHF tax, I'm sure all of you 
well, all the people in this room who've been part of the military have at least heard of use it um, in the past. So it's, it's an old technology dated in the 1960s. It's basically creating a, a network um, of, of radio users. Um, and instead of having a radio tower that you're using the spacecraft as your, re your relay, so effectively one third of the globe that's covered by the footprint of the spacecraft is your the size of your network. Um, and it's really interesting uh, as a piece of technology because it provides a resilient system, so not sensitive to foliage, for instance, um, not sensitive to weather. Um, it, it's also combat proven. It dates from the 1960s, so that's, that's, um, that's something that you know. And, and it's also something that is really interesting going back to loads of the things that we discussed previous on, previous on, on the panels um, because it, it does provide um, not only small and lightweight terminals, but also ritual compatibility with all the systems. So basically, most of the standard legacy UHF radio system operating in line of sights can easily be operating in BDOS, provided you change the antennas, um, which is something that most of our partners, uh, military partners, are really interested about. Um, it's also in secure, reliable solutions. Um, most of the, the radios operating in the system have a type one encryption behind them. Um, it's highly flexible, highly adaptable. You don't need that much to train a soldier to use it, which is also important because when you look at the tactical units using that type of technology, well, if, if, the, if the main signal intelligence guy gets shot down, then anybody else can use that system quite easily. So that's also something that you need to, that, that, that is, that's, that's a big interest for that. Um, and one factor that we need to highlight as well in terms of that piece of technology is that it's interoperable within the NATO nations, interoperable and retrocompatible with older systems uh, and legacy technologies, and it provides a unique feature to um, the conduct of tactical operation and the reach back um, of a strategic level. Um, so, so here you have a few examples of the types of applications that are used today for with UHF technologies. Um, not all of them must have UHF or require UHF. Some of them could go with other types of technologies, but some other couldn't. So if you look at a very tactical level for uh, communicating during an operation, um, it is a must have. Uh, it is a must have for certain medevac operations. Um, it is a must have when you start requesting air support uh, while being engaged. Um, and it is also quite, an, the, the, you have quite interesting features in using that type of technology as well for um, submarine beyond the line of sight types of communication. So um, in order to keep, I will keep it that quick, but it's just to give you an example of the way that works. Um, the legacy way UHF functions is, is basically pretty simple. Um, a group of users gets allocated a 25 kilohertz um, UHF channel, and, and then it's, it's all about push to talk and short bursts of data. So um, like a, a military on the ground starts sending out some message, then the spacecraft's gonna relay that to all the users within that network, um, and, and everybody's informed. Um, because, because it is limited by essence to when you're operating in that legacy mode to one, one group of user per channel. Um, technologies have emerged just like DEMA or IW, which I will not bore you with as well, but, but, but the principle is just that with, with DEMA, for instance, in that type of um, UHF channel, you can have, instead of having one group of users, you can go up to five. With IW, you could go up to 14. And this is just an illustration of how it works. So one subgroup using the same channel communicates. So here a chopper talks to a ground station, uh, but at the same time, you can have one ground station emitting in another sub part of that network. So another network within that 25 kilohertz channel um, talking to um, a guy on the ground. Um, I've taken the liberty to go, and that was that was uh, also a a strong request from from Joffre, uh, to take you guys through some use cases, um, highlighting very kind of very specific ones where UHF is really really interesting for um, our customers and partners. So this one is a, a purely army tactical type of communication use case where you see at the bottom um, some 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 soldiers being engaged, so they're getting hot. Um, requesting support um, through uh, the UHF uh, network uh, using their standard um, Harris radio or any other UHF uh, functioning radio. Um, the satellite will then rebroadcast that to every user 
uh, on that uh, network. That, for instance, can include so a ground station, a military base, or even the HQ, if it is within the footprint of um, the satellite, and, this, and, and also to the helicopter on the right. So in that scenario, um, the um, Tiger helicopter receives that message, acknowledges, and then um, message gets transferred to the rest of the, the combat net. Um, chopper comes in, supports the troop, then you have a med evac requested, there you go. And that was all done um, within less than an hour in that situation because, um, because of that uh, capacity to place that communication quite quickly. Everybody can then react um, and you can coordinate using your radios with this whole system. So that's, that's one, one very particular use case. So um, another use case that I wanted to highlight here, that's, that's one that um, most of our partners use UHF for as well, is a correlation exercise or operation for that matter. So you can see here, so you have the green army and the orange army. Um, they're in their operation at this particular point of that simulation, communicating together using their line of sight UHF. Um, by moving a bit forward, they get out of range, so they switch to um, they switch to BLOSS communication, uh, and then the satellite, which is owned and operated by Orange, shares its capacity to this complete group of users uh, in order to communicate um, not only just to one centre of operation, but to all the HQ provided there within the footprint of the satellite, which provides a very interesting feature as well. Um, and then it's just more, more communication highlighting that it, it operates as a group. Um, this other one is a use case um, for, for the Navy. So like same principle as before, operating in a very kind of um, network kind of approach using UHF. Um, and and the, the interesting part is that you can see and that we wanted to simulate with that is that certain submarines don't even have to resurface to use that type of capacity, which, which is also an interesting feature um, in order to move forward. Um, I'm not going to go into more technical details here. Should you have any question, obviously, you're free to come and either ask them now or, or later on. Um, I will close this um, presentation on a very short note about the future of, of UHF. So, Obviously, 1960s tech, so that's that's not that's not new. However, um, Airbus has been heavily looking into making it something different. Um, could we, for instance, use it with a Leo constellation? What type of features will that bring? Will it bring better usage? Could we could we keep the same use cases and say principle of operation with a Leo constellation in UHF? So those are topics for R and D that Airbus is investing in. Um, and then as a completely, because I know everybody's bored and tired, so of, you, you will have two minutes video to look at just to unwind, um, explaining why we've invested into um, a new UHF payload with UHLSAT, which will be launched in 2024 with 18 UHF channels. That's obviously open if anybody wants to have more information or even a share of it. Uh, and then, yeah, you can all go for lunch. There you go. I should mention as well that um, we have to thank the French Special Forces for giving us all the facilities. Those are real, long, real ones.
Thank you so much. Sarah, You're for a wonderful welcome. talk. <laughs> Thank you.